All right, guys, welcome to our June leaders meeting. We're going to start this meeting off with our shout outs like we always do. Stop it. Um, I'm going to do a top 12 for PRV in um, May because we had all 12, top 12 had over 2K PRV. So first things first, Tara Dickerson with nearly 5K PRV. If you are not picking her brain, I don't know what you're doing. Whitney Hebel, Sarah Evans, Meredith McCallan, Paulina Quay, Katrina Anderson, Sylvia Slutsky, Amber Pileshi, Leslie Hill, Anya Faust, Ashley Crabtree, and Paige Ruswald. Every single one of those people had over 2K PRB and all but one, I believe, are leaders. So that's super exciting. Anyone that you heard that is on your team um, that makes that top 10, if you see they're making top 10 out of our whole group, we should be working closely with them, okay? <laughs> um, we should be saying, if you have 2K PRV as a certified consultant, you have your PRV figured out. Let's focus on the next leg. Promotions, the one and only Laura Blaylock to director. Congratulations, Laura. Huge month for her. Top sponsoring, keep in mind, we had our point special last month. Okay, so me and Katrina came in with five new teamies last month. That is amazing. Casey Miles brought in four new teamies. Amanda Kicklighter, Anya Faust, Alex Wellman, Tara Dickerson, and Megan Moody all brought in three. Guys, that's huge. That's, I'm not even going to try and add it up. That's a lot of people just between those names, okay? Um, since we're talking about sponsoring, I just wanted to let y'all know that last month with the joint special, we added 190 new teammates to our group. 190 new people, 190 new opportunities. Now, to put it in perspective for you, we have added eight this month. Okay. We went from 190 with a joint special to eight, and we have a week left in the month just to put it in perspective. So here we are up here with that 190. That's super exciting. Here's reality, okay? <sighs> Most active frontline. I had 32 in May. Anya Faust had 16. Casey Miles had 11. And Paige Ruswald came in with 10. So congratulations to all of them. Most active frontline. Our group sales in May, $253,388. So we are well on our way to a multi-million year, which is insane. Um, and okay, incentive before we do announcements. Um, we have 48 people in our group, y'all, that have earned this incentive. That is huge. 48 people. I remember, and this is just to reminisce but I remember when I told Eric I can't wait for my teammates when we went to Mexico I was like I cannot wait for my teammates to join me on these incentives and so I am like next incentive trip y'all better be ready to go because I want every single person who earns it to be there okay with your spouse because you're earning for two or your best friend or your partner or whatever it's called I don't care what it's called just bring you and your best person and come on but we have a week left in this incentive. We have 48 people who have earned some type of level. Level three, Whitney Hebel, Paulina Littlefield, or Quay, Ani Faust, I'm reading from the Facebook post, by the way, um, Tara Dickerson, Jordan Barnett, Sylvia Slutsky, Mindy Hilton, Leslie Banner, Sarah Wilson, Brittany Sussex, Alex Wellman, and Casey Miles. That's all level three. Level two, Mandy Leon, Brittany Holbrook, Lindsay Lynn, Aaron Zuniga, Mark Glover Garcia, Laura Blaylock, Chastity Whitlow, Samantha Bateman, Paige Ruswald, and Kim Cooper. That was level two. Level one, Katrina Anderson, Amy Jo Shuley, Berkeley Eusty, Jean Zimmerman, Ashley Lynn, Ashley Cochran, Amanda Erickson. Dom Seibley, Chelsea Geller, Rachel Fu Fuentes, Fuentes, 
Marianne Lang, Megan Moody, I almost called you Blaylock, Logan Page, Jessica Galvin, Leslie Allison, guys, this is a lot of names, Cece Mook, Shonda Lappin, Taylor Beaver, Rebecca Allen, Brandy Burkett, Meredith McCowan, Sarah Evans, Shannon Zuniga, Kirsten Russell, Ariel Lynn, and Emily Smith. That is amazing. Keep in mind that on our leaders group, when I'm putting all those names in there, some of those people that aren't tagged, they're certified consultants that are learning, that are earning an incentive. Um, they should be super close to a promotion. If those are your people, again, you should be reaching out to them. Huge to earn an incentive as a certified consultant, but that promotion is right there. They're literally missing out on money if they don't promote. Um, yeah, that was a lot. Announcements. SFR is next month. Did y'all know that? SFR is next month. It is virtual. There is no reason that every single leader should not be signed up for that. Um, I know that I have personally sent an email every single first of the month to all of you, to my whole group, and I've included that in there, but I know that the directors are also sharing that. If they are not sharing that with you, I'm here to let you know that SFR is next month and I want you to attend, okay? We are going to Myrtle Beach, a small group of us. Anyone is welcome. Um, sign up for the virtual access. Let your director know you want to meet us in Myrtle Beach. And let's just do it. Keep your teams accountable with, even if you're not a director, keep your teams accountable. See how many people from your team are going. You can just look at that on the events tab. Um, and if they're not coming, all the conversations that I've had, they thought they had to be there virtually at a certain time. It's not the case. Everything's gonna be available for 30 days. The trainings last year were available on the training tab. They still are from last year. So no reason not to do it. Um, and keep yourself accountable too, guys. If you're not signed up for SFR, you cannot be talking about asking your teams to go to SFR, okay? Um, there will not be a meeting in July for leaders for the Simply Grace and Great group because I'll be on vacation and then I'll be going to SFR and SFR is at the end of the month. So that would, I hope is everyone's main focus, okay? So no meeting in July. Our next meeting will be August 23rd, which seems really far away, but I guess it's not. Um, all righty. So let's just get to it. Can you, um, hold on. Okay. Awesome. So I asked in the leaders page, what do y'all need help on? What do you need training on? What can we talk about that will help you? And I think I had like four, four to six answers, maybe. And two of them stuck out and two of them a lot of people agreed with. The first one is leaders not being paid a title. Not us specifically, but as leaders, our leaders not being paid a title. What to do with that? How do we handle that? What should we be doing? And I've got some notes for you. Y'all, I took notes. I'm super proud of myself. But the first question that I would ask would be on what scale? What scale are they not promoted or being paid a title? Did they promote and they never got paid a title again? Are they one month um, they promoted and then the next month they weren't paid a title and then the next month they are and the next month they are? Do they go back and forth? Do they care? Do they care that they're not paid a title? Um, do you care more than them? Answer all of those questions. And that can probably give you the, you know, the answer I'm going to give you. Okay. It really does depend case by case. Now we always do for one, what we can do for a hundred, but with our leaders, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit later, we really need to focus on our dependable leaders, our dependable legs. Okay. Um, the next thing would be, do they know how to get paid a title? I'm not saying compensation plan. I'm not saying numbers wise. I'm saying, do they know the actions that they have to take to get paid a title? So when they were paid a title, do they know if you were to ask someone how, like if they had a good month and they promoted, how did you have such a good month? What did you do this month that was so different that you're now a star consultant? 
if they come back to you and say, I don't know, I think I was lucky, I don't know what I did, then if they can't tell you that's a problem, that's the first thing that we need to be doing. We need to be digging into them because that just may be their first response. I don't know what I did because they're in such a whirlwind that they can't believe what's going on, the success they've had. Um, and they're still in shock, if, especially if they double promoted, they probably don't even know what they're doing. All right. So that's when we, as our, as their leader, we dig into them and we say, well, what did you do? And that's when we coach them to tell us what they did. When you're coaching someone to tell, when you're coaching someone about being paid at title, you're asking them, what did you do differently that month? What was your PRB that month? How many parties did you have? What were your leaders PRB that month? Who else promoted that month? Are they paid at title? All of that goes into someone being paid at title, okay? If you're coaching them the best you can and you really can't get out of them what they did differently, then they probably promoted on accident, okay? It happens. Directors accidentally promote, okay? It happens, but the chance that you get if you're not a director, you can build up to then be paid at title again, okay? If you're a director and you don't get paid a title for six months, you go back down to Superstar Consultant. You lose your title. You can't do that if you're a Superstar Consultant or lower, okay? Um, so really coaching them and seeing them, see, seeing what's in them. Like I said, do they care? If you care more than they do about pay, being paid at title, then you need to take a step back as a leader and build a new leader, okay? Because we're not, we're not gonna continue to pour into people who aren't going to take what we have to offer. That's just how it is, okay? The other thing is training on actual, actual skills, income producing skill sets. So what do they do? What is their skill, skill? I feel like I say that weird. Maybe it's the accent a little bit, but what is their skill in their business? What are they really good at? Are they really good at PRB? Or are they really bad at sponsoring and they need to be trained on that skill because they need to get better at that? Those are things to be talking to with these people who are not paid a title. Um, obviously, we're going to start with our three legs, PRB, partying, follow-ups, bag parties, Facebook parties. You can be really good or really bad at all of those things. Okay, same thing for sponsoring, conversation, sharing your lifestyle, being consistent in your story. You can be really good or really bad at that. You can be really consistent or really un inconsistent with that. And that is a skill that you have to learn in your business. If you don't know what your skills are in your business, then you're not even going to know how to set up a system. Okay, and all of these things need a system. This all connects back to a system. If you have a leader that doesn't have a system for something, they're not going to be able to tell you how they did it. They're not going to be like, look, this is how I did it. This is who I talked to. This is how many said yes. This is how many said no. This is when I'm going to follow up with them. That's how you get good at a skill. You get a system and you do it over and over again until it's a well old machine that it does, you do it without even knowing it. Okay, that's a system. Um, coaching. So with your newer leaders, some of them probably aren't coaching yet. That's okay. But under coaching in the three legs of success is training. Are they training on what they're good at? Are they training their teammates? Are they sharing their knowledge? If they're not doing that, they're doing themselves and their team a disservice. They're not teaching anybody any skills. Okay. There's a difference between training and coaching or coaching and mentoring, guys, okay? We have to teach people skills. We have to do them ourselves so we can get better at them. We have to master our systems as leaders so we can say, oh, you don't have a system for follow-ups? Let me show you mine because it's scalable. It's usable. It's something that everyone else can use, okay? Um, so calls, trainings, challenging your downline, talking to them, don't just sponsor them. And, and if they're not doing what they need to do, just be like, oh, that's okay, girl, we'll, do, we'll get it next month. You know, people say that some of us directors and hire are harsh. We're here for a reason. We treat it like a business. Okay. Um, other skills, Linktree, Reels, TikToks, Canva, 
all of those things are skills. You're either really good at it, or maybe you're a little bit good at it, or you're bad at it, or you've never even done it, okay? If someone who is really successful in their business likes to take pictures, how about that? That's one thing that I used to hate to do. I'm like, I am not wasting my time taking a picture when there's a million others out there. But then I realized that was something that I needed to start doing so people could relate to me and my pictures. And when they saw a picture almost, they could be like, oh, that's Whitney's picture, okay? That has been a skill that I have been working on. I used to not ever even do it, but now that's something that I've been trying to be consistent with and anything that comes through my door, I take a picture of or with, okay? So really finding what are they good at, focus on broadening that. Okay, if they are a lead consultant, say they have one team and they're a lead consultant and they can't get paid a title, what are they good at? First ask that, they're really good at PRV or maybe they're really good at sponsoring. They have the 500 PRV, they have maybe three frontline, but those frontline aren't producing, then we know the problem. It's training and coaching, okay? Um, but with all of that said, it is ultimately up to them to be paid a title, okay? I said this on Dive Into Director last night. We are in the business of building leaders by doing all of what I just said and mentoring them, but they have to put the work in. You can't do it for them. You can give them every single tool they need to build a business, but if they don't pick up those tools and use them, they ain't building shit, okay? It is going to be exhausting and I bet you're tired if you're continually trying to pour into people who are not producing, okay? Same thing for being motivated. We'll just go right into that. You're probably exhausted from, because you're focusing on the wrong people, on the wrong thing. Motivation is temporary. And that's the other thing that was asked, keeping people motivated, keeping your team motivated, how to do that. Motivation is temporary. You can only share so many quotes, podcasts, video, videos, anything motivation, but that motiv motivation has to come from within. Even if you're sharing those things, if they don't take the time to really apply that to themselves, it's, it's worthless, okay? You can share everything that someone needs, again, everything that they need to, to fulfill themselves, to feel like they have worth. But if they don't apply it to themselves or their business, it's just not, it's, it's, it's a waste of time. You also don't want them to depend on you for motivation. That should not be coming from their leader. Instead, you wanna focus more on inspiring them, engaging them, energizing them, those are different things. They all, all those words mean different things. But for someone to look for motivation in you, like intentionally to be like, oh, I need to go watch a Whitney training so I can get motivated. No. Or I need to go watch a Chloe training so I can get motivated. No. You need to find that motivation within yourself. Go scroll Pinterest. Go Google something. Go read a book. Okay. All of those things can motivate you. Stop. And this goes both ways, right? Like I said, you don't want to teach your, your leaders to rely on you to be like, oh, I need some motivation. I'm just not feeling it today. It's just not my day. Like, give me a pep talk. You know, people have messaged me that and I'm like, girl, you need to go find that in yourself. Like I am, I am your cheerleader with your business, but I'm not here to pump you up every single day. You have to be willing to work for this when you don't feel like it. Okay, so motivation is temporary. Let's focus, like I said, on inspiring them. How do we do that? One, <laughs> we share what we're doing. We share how Cincy has blessed us, just like with our customers. Do your leaders even want your job? Okay, do you have fun in your business? Do you share that you have fun? Do you share what you're doing? Do you love being recognized? Do you even like being a leader? Let's take a step back. <laughs> like if you're in leadership so you can have a paycheck or so you can have a title, you're in it for the wrong reason. 
Do you like leading people? Do you like getting to know people and helping people reach their goals? Share that with your people. Share that that's why you're doing this, okay? Um, engaging them, that comes from those team pages. If all you're ever posting is challenges to get more PRV or let's push for this so I can get paid at title or making everything about the, the, your post about you or your numbers or what's in it for you, they are not gonna care what you have to say. If you're not taking the time to get to know your people, to message them one-on-one, -on -one, that is so important. If you're not talking to your teammates one-on-one -on -one at least every few months, depending on how many you have, that needs to be a goal. Every single Thursday, I reach out to five teamies. We have 686 in our group. It's not always about the business, but some of these people on, even on here, I'm like, she's been in this for three months and I want to hear what she has to say. I want to learn from her. My title has nothing to do with me learning. Okay. So if your people aren't engaged with you, they're not, they don't get energized by what you're doing or what you're sharing. Okay. Let's focus on that. Be the kind of person that makes other people want to up their game. I love that quote. Be the kind of person that makes other people want to up their game. Damn, she is always on these calls. Damn, she is really on every single post on here welcoming everybody. Wow, she goes live every single week. Dang, she's in the top 10 again. Oh, wow, she sponsored someone else. Are you that person? Because if you're not that person, you can't ask your people to be that person. If you are that person and you feel like you're not getting any response from people, have you messaged them one-on-one? -on -one? Have you built a relationship with them? Or are you treating them as a pack? Okay, those are some questions to ask yourself. I'm not saying you're not doing it, but you have to be you. You have to lead by example and you have to be consistent with whatever you do. You can't dip out for two weeks in your business, guys, with your leaders and be like, I'm on vacay, the weather's nice, I'm gonna go sunbathe and meh, they'll deal with it. No girl, no. You have to show up consistently, okay? And trust is earned, right? I mean, usually, <laughs> depends on who you are. That's how I was raised. A lot of, you're a good person if you can trust someone right off the bat. But if you can, once you're able to trust someone, not just as a friend, but with your business, okay? Cause there's, and this is a totally different training, but friendship and business ship or whatever this called business friendship are two different things. And they need to be kept separate. God willing, they need to be kept separate. But if you're not building that relationship within your business, they're just gonna see you as this person who wants, who's money hungry, who's title hungry, okay? and that ain't good so like I said do they want your job do you share all the perks of being a leader I think maybe five people shared that chat that we were invited with um, Chuck on their social media you had access to home office one-on-one -on -one to ask him anything oh leaders only because Chloe asked us, she was like, should we do everyone? And we were like, no, this is a leader's perk. And it was, but that's just an example of like, why would you not share that? Why would you not share? It's not just for your customers, it's for your teammates too. Do they want your job? Or are they like, gosh, I don't ever see her on a Zoom. Or gosh, I don't ever see her stepping it up and doing a training, so I'm not going to do it. <laughs> right? So keeping them motivated is not your job, to be completely honest with you. It's not your job to keep your teammates motivated. It is your job to be a friend when they need it, but to also be honest with them because that's what you want in return, right? I always say, if you're in this business for a hobby, which I think probably 90% of people join saying, oh, it's just going to be a hobby. Oh, I'm just going to get paid off my purchases. Oh, it's just no big deal. But then they see what it can do and that changes. Having that open line of communication is so important. But it is not your job to keep them motivated. Now, both of these questions come from 
the want to be better, right? Like you want your leaders paid a title. You want your people to be happy in what they're doing. You want them to be motivated and always go getting it like you are, right? So how do we do that? How do we fulfill that without feeling down on ourselves as leaders? Because it's hard when, you're, when your people aren't paid a title. I get it, trust me. I have leaders every single month that aren't paid a title. I get it. Me, myself, it's been two and a half years since I haven't been paid a title, okay? Because I built it wide. And this is one thing that Chloe taught me. Width, W-I-D-T-H, width, build it wide. We cannot rely on one or two or even three lines in our business, okay? And when I see, say lines, I mean, this is from a Jesse Lee podcast, significant lines of sponsorship. Write it down, significant lines of sponsorship. If you were to pick who your significant lines of sponsorship were on your team, that means not someone who is your front line and your down and their down line and their down line. No, your direct line of sponsorship, aka usually front line, but not always, right? Because people can get out promoted. But how many do you have right now? Do some self evaluation on yourself. How many significant lines of sponsorship do you have? So if say you have three or say you even have five. And two of those people decide to dip out. You're left with three minimum. That's a minimum number for a leader. Okay. <laughs> you don't want that. You don't ever want to be at minimum numbers for that, that line of sponsorship. So see how many you have right now. How many new ones do you have? And how many total do you want all together at the end of the year? Those are goals that you should have written down. I have on my goals, five new frontline directors this year, two down, three to go. And it's not treating people as numbers, it's goals for you, it's a business, right? And if you don't see it as a business, you have to start seeing this as a business. Oh, I don't wanna hurt their feelings. It's not about feelings at this point, guys. It really isn't. Do you wanna work or do you not? That's what it comes down to, all right? Um. So think about that. And that was something that when Jesse Lee said that, I was like, oh shit, that's really good because those lines are your lifelines to your business, right? That's why we don't rely on one, two, or three people. That's why we build it wide. That's why those crazy frontline numbers that Chloe gave us are crazy. <laughs> They're crazy for a reason. So you can build that business wide and you're not, and like I said, I have leaders every month that pay, not pay a title, but that doesn't directly affect me because my front line is so wide. And that's what the goal is, continuing to widen that. Okay. Um, so there wasn't any questions that whole time. Yes, there's a friend mode and there's a business mode for sure. Totally different hats. And that's the thing, like I... Probably more than half my front line are my very, very close friends. Like my sister is my front line. My best friend from high school is my front line. Two of my best friends from high school. Okay. And there's a difference. There has to be a difference. Okay. But they're still a person. You still love them. But this is my business. Like this is, this is not up for discussion. This is not up for yay or nay. Like this is a yay for me. So if it's a nay for you, that's fine. But I need to know that. Okay. Yes. Put those feelings in your pocket. No questions. Awesome. So just a heads up real quick. If I called your name earlier today, I am going to call you again and I want you to unmute yourselves and get, I'm going to give you 15 seconds to share a tip with the, with the group, any tip you want, either something related to tonight or just something in general. But the people that I have called out on these these um, shout outs that I call out every single month, every single month. This is, it's a lot of the same people, right? Um, you are worthy of something to share. So I'm gonna just start calling names and I'm, I'm gonna unmute you and I want you to just give me a tip, any kind of tip, give the whole group a tip. Everyone needs to learn from everyone in this business, okay? So 
Eric, I'm gonna make you the bad guy. Pick one that's highlighted. If they're on here. Nope, she's not. Which one? This one? No. Mm -mm. No. Mm. He's picking all the people who aren't a leader no. yet. This one, Paulina. Where's Paulina? At? X, X. I can't see everybody. I saw her earlier. There she is. Paulina, you there? Her screen is dark. Pick another one. We'll go with Paige. Paige. That's who I thought he was pointing at. Um, why not? Why not you? Why can't you do this? Um, like I said earlier, uh, we were doing a dive into director and I was a lead when I found out about the incentive. I just got off my incentive trip and I, why not? Why not push for that? Why aren't you wanting that? It was all expense paid. And I got to see my little boy just full of wonder and excitement and experiencing something new. Um, so all I have to say is get uncomfortable and be okay with it and tell yourself, why not me? Absolutely. Anya, your turn. Um, I think my biggest tip is do not stifle yourself just because a few people have something to say. Don't do it. Be authentically you because it's going to be appreciated by those who need it the most. That is my tip. Amen. Thank you, boo. Sylvia? You. All right, I'm unmuted. Um, dig deep in your why and also help your teamies dig deep in their why because that is how they're going to get motivated. Not you telling them what they need to do, not you telling them what motivates you. It's what motivates them. So if you can't get them to dig into that why, not just some superficial thing, but dig deep, you will see them show up every month. Oh, for sure. Tara. Hey, so definitely as far as your team, like really get to know each person on your team, building those relationships, um, like one-on-one -on -one messages, texts, whatever it may be. But to me, I've kind of taken that approach and really gotten to know some of my teammates and I can tell a difference just in, you know, how they're doing and how they're growing and they're even more excited to grow. So just take that extra time to build those relationships. Mm -hmm. For sure. Megan? Megan Blaylock Moody. Megan. Pauline, are can you, you hear? Oh, there can you are. Me? Can you hear me? Um, I would just say to, like you always say, show up every day, even when you don't want to. I have some days where I'm just like, blah, but I just try to show up every day, at least once a day, somehow, some way. And I think you know, lead them by example, that will teach our, our front line to show up to every day. For sure. That consistency is everything. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Paulina, you ready? Sorry. I didn't know the baby was. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. Going. You will. Go. So yeah, I mean, same idea, consistency, um, but share the opportunity with all your hostesses. I have had people join that I never would have expected to join and maybe they're just kidnappers and maybe they aren't going to, you know, take this as a business and maybe they're just going to be a hobbyist, but it's still people who have joined under me and they've been certified and, you know, they're, they're making something out of it. And I never expected them to, and they're not people that I know personally. So just keep sharing that opportunity. Yep everybody stop giving them an answer before you even ask for sure sarah sarah evans i'll do one more oh it's loud at my house because i'm getting my countertops that since you pay for so there's that they're installing them now nice. but um <laughs> mine is set really unrealistic goals like set goals that you think there's no way humanly possible at my full-time job we call them stretch goals but um set those goals that you feel like you can never reach 
and push to reach them. And um, you're not going to get any better by setting goals you know that you're going to reach. Yep. Absolutely. Big, scary, freaking goals. All right, Katrina, round us out. Here I thought you weren't going to call on me. Shit. My <laughs> Come on, you're her favorite. What are you talking <laughs> no, I'm not. Um, mine's just super short and simple and to the point. Quit making excuses. No, I might have a few extra words on that if you don't mind. No. Absolutely. We love to hear from Bart. <laughs> I know you do. It makes me happy. Thank you. Um, don't encourage him. You can't make people want what they don't want. Right. I mean, that's just a fact of life. Like you can push all day long. Um, Miss Whitney, I have quoted you time and again. There comes a point in time where you need to just bless and release. Right. Like that's that's kind of a given. What you can do in the interim is see through discussion with them how bad they really do want it. And that's something you kind of got to drill down into. But beyond that, you can show them what success can really look like. And after that, the ball is in their court, right? I, I continually go back to like my favorite speaker, Eric Thomas. Um, he talks about when, when you want to be successful, as bad as you want to breathe, that's when you'll be successful. And up until that point in time, right? It's, it's just not gonna happen. And people don't really understand that, that concept if they've never had their breath held from them, right? They, they don't get it because nobody knows what it's like to not be able to breathe unless you've got like asthma or unless you've been held underwater, whatever. When you want it that bad, you'll find a way whether it means staying up late or getting up early, whether it means putting in the extra hours, you know, two extra phone calls every day, whatever it is, you, you'll get after it. But yeah, I got it. Quick tip, track it. She just told me to show up. <laughs> you can't make them what they don't want. You want what they don't want. Just show them what success looks like. And after that, you know, you've led the horse to water. Yep. Yep, absolutely. Um, yeah, and like Sylvia just said, you don't want excuses from your teammates. So why are you going to give excuses? And that's the thing, like we've all been in the same, not the exact same situation, but I was once a certified consultant. I was once a lead consultant. I was once with a team that didn't do respond to me. You know, like we were all there at some point. And we actually spoke about this in Dive Into Director last night. Go watch the training. And Tara said it, when she was at her hardest points, that's when the biggest change happened, right? That's when the biggest thing that, when it was the hardest, that's when her growth happened. And that is it right there. When you don't feel like doing it, that's when you're going to do it. Thank y'all so much for sharing. I'm going to leave y'all with one quote, and I really love this. Stop letting your potential go to waste because you don't feel confident or ready enough. People with half of your talents and skill are making serious waves while you're still waiting to feel ready. That is huge because that's one thing I hear a lot from y'all is I don't have anything to share. I don't have anything to give. If you're on this call at 9, 10 at night, you have something to give. You're here showing up. I don't care if you have one teamy. I don't care if you have half a teamy. You're here and you have something to offer. Like I said, some of y'all that go live, I'm like, yep, I'm watching that one. I can't watch every live. If y'all haven't noticed that, I cannot watch every live. I tried and it's exhausting. It does not fill my cup to try and watch every single little thing. Do I try my best? Yes. But there are some people I'm like, ooh, I need to hear what she has to say. Why? Because they've shared once and they're, and I'm like, yes, yes, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. So I'll say it again. Stop letting your potential go to waste because you don't feel confident or ready enough. People with half of your talents and skill, that skill set, half of the people, ha people with half of what you have are making serious ways while you're still waiting to feel ready. You got to get uncomfortable, guys. You got to. All righty.